Okay, hi guys. I'm going to do a video today about mostly about the Trekology UL80 sleeping mat, which I'm sure if you're into wild camping and you've watched uh, some of the other channels, you will have seen a few videos on that already. There's a few online reviewing it and stuff. Uh, what makes my video a little bit different is that I've had a problem with one of mine and I've dealt with their customer service and um, I'll talk about, a bit about that as well but I'm also going to include a bit of information about the kind of evolution of my sleep system and how I got to the UL80 and uh, why, I've, why I've stuck with it so far. If you do uh, enjoy our videos or find any of these reviews helpful, please do like and subscribe. All the channels that have reviewed the uh, Trekology mat have basically said the same thing, that it's like the most comfortable mat that they've ever used, and I'd have to agree. It's massive. Neither my hip nor my shoulder touches the floor. Pretty comfy to sit on as well. With my experience, uh, it's 10 centimeters thick and it's really, really good for side sleepers, which I am, um, unlike a lot of other mats. And um, for, the, for the money, I mean, at the moment it's 40 quid on Amazon, and you can't, really, you can't really beat that value for what it is. I don't think there's anything quite like it out there at the moment. Um, obviously you could just go to your high-end stuff, like some of the Thermarest ones, which are better insulated and stuff like that, and they might be somewhere near as comfortable. But there's channels where people have used those high-end ones and they say the Trekology one, although it's not as warm, it's not as insulated, maybe it's not as lightweight or easy to put up, but it's still the most comfortable. The only drawbacks with this mat is, one, it takes a lot of blowing up. So when they first released it, um, they showed that on the pictures that you could use an electric pump. Um, nobody really wants to carry that around with them, especially when it's an ultra-light mat. What's the point in carrying a heavy pump then? Um, so you really have to just kind of blow it with your lungs and it takes a, quite a lot of a lot of work to blow it up. I mean, you can do a bit, have a break, go back to it. Um, but I found I can get really lightheaded trying to blow it up in one go. It's not self-inflating. Um, so I looked around on the internet trying to find a pump sack, which is basically a bag that you fill with air and then squeeze in to fill it with air that way. Some of the higher end brands have got that already with their ones. Um, Trekology just didn't have one for this. So I looked online trying to find one that would fit it. Didn't really want to take a punch just in case it didn't fit. And then I came across some strange German one on Amazon. It was like the writing, the name was all in German. And um, it was really cheap. Like I know there was some, some by the bigger brands that people said might fit it. But you're talking like 30 quid or something for a pump sack when the mat itself when i bought it originally the first time was 35 quid so it's a bit steep for what is just a bit of you know a plastic bag basically this german one was like seven eight quid i thought give it a go it's on prime anyway i can always send it back i mean it is huge you can fill up the mat maybe three four goes and then you know just finish it off by blowing into the last bit to get your firmness that you want and it comes with all different attachments for the nozzles so I thought one of them's got to fit one thing that I ended up using is just this uh, sort of cone shaped one so that does fit in at some point it bites but it doesn't really stay in very well so you have to kind of try and hold it in place whilst you blow it up which is a little bit awkward. Then, a long time later, months and months and months, maybe even a year later, finally, I saw on Amazon that Trekology had released the pump sack for the mat. So I snapped it up and I gave it a go. So I've got a few of my bits that I've used, um, some that I don't use anymore and some of the stuff that I use now, including the Trekology, um, just for ease of use, all in the the blue bag, the giant German pump sack, and uh, let's go through them. So first of all, I stand back, the sack itself. As you can see, it's massive. It's about, I don't know, four foot. Flux bag, 
that's what it's called. So that's the bag that I got in the end to blow up the Trickology U080. And when I started camping, um, obviously I've tried the foam mats years ago. Um, I kind of upgraded when I got into wild camping and stuff and uh, you know actually started camping properly not just back when I was a teenager and festivals and stuff and I got the this the Berghaus uh, I think it's called the Peak put the details on the screen and you can see it's quite quite chunky but it's self inflating and um, this was you yeah. know a big improvement and I think if you're sleeping on your back something like this is probably fine um, it's got a little bit of foam and a bit of air it's going to give you a little bit of insulation from the ground and for a lot of people it will do um, but for me being a side sleeper I had a pretty rough night um, back when I did the our first winter wild camp um, sleeping on my side woke up with a bad back my shoulder was hurting you know it just it doesn't really do the job for side sleepers so there's the details on there and it's the peak self-inflating mat it's the full length one 650 grams it's only 51 centimeters wide as well so it's not that wide it's a well-made mat like I said it will do a lot of people but if you're a side sleeper maybe not and that's where I wanted to upgrade so that's when I got the um, Trichology Aluft UL80. Obviously, the UL stands for ultralight. Designed in Portland, Oregon, made in China. So it is a, um, I think it's an American brand, but obviously it's made in China to keep the cost down, and that's one of the probably one of the reasons why it's cheap because it is like really good quality, really well made. Um, I've got some of their trekking poles as well. Maybe I'll do a review on them. And they're actually really good for the money as well. Now I've put the pump sack inside here just to keep it together so you can slip that in the same bag as the actual mat, which is handy. So this is the bag. As you can see, in comparison to that other one, it's pretty small. Now the bottom, the nozzle, can go into itself for storage and then you've got hard bits on the top to, to roll it down and seal it up but to be honest you don't even need to do that bit as long as it's rolled over that's it and that takes a lot of pumping um, it's not like you know a few pumps that it's done you still have to do it loads and loads of times and you can see me doing that I'll put a link to the um, the video where I used it and um, so it does take a lot of pumping, but do you know what? You can just kind of lean your weight on it, do it over and over again. It's not hard work, so it's much easier than blowing into it using your lungs, trust me. The weird thing is, on Amazon now, you don't seem to be able to get that pump sack anymore. I'm not sure if Trichology are just in the middle of making more of them, or if they just didn't bother making any more of them. I don't know. The next part of comfort in your sleep system with regards to your mat and what goes on the ground, we're not going to talk about sleeping bags today, would be your pillow. Especially if you're a side sleeper, you need to fill this gap between your shoulder and your head, otherwise you're just going to be like this. And I know some people just use like a down jacket or a jumper rolled up. If you're not a very comfortable sleeper, you, you need a proper pillow. Um, I've had this pretty cheap inflatable pillow from Decathlon. Depending on how much you blow it up, obviously, it depends on the firmness, but I found it a little bit too firm. It's not the worst thing in the world, it's pretty good, but there's nothing to hold it in place and it slides around. And then I found that there was the Trekology one. And um, this, again, has been sort of rated as one of the most comfortable pillows out there, for an inflatable pillow anyway. It is tiny, it weighs nothing, you're not going to think about that being in your bag. It's called the Aluft Pillow 2.0 and uh, it's got a strap on the back to hold it in place which you can remove. It's curved so it keeps your head in the middle and it's just, I've got to say, it's absolutely brilliant design and it goes perfectly with the UO80 mat. So if you are starting out, don't waste your time on other mats that are 
but they're just simply not going to be as good unless you're going to go high end which if you're just starting out you probably shouldn't just in case you're not you don't really um, stick to the hobby but if you're into hiking and backpacking and um, wild camping you don't want to spend too much money on a map a sleep system just get the UO80 because it's the best one out there for the money I think now it's 40 quid when I got it it was like 35 it went up to 45 and I think at the moment it's about 40 so it does go up and down on, on Amazon and this pillow those two together brilliant if you want even more comfort especially if you're a side sleeper and I'll keep saying that but it does make a big difference to how you sleep you might want to get cheap sort of soft pillow as well I've got this Euro hike one I think it was uh, from Millets comes out it condenses down it's, it, it doesn't go tiny but it's not that heavy and it just gives you a bit of um, something a bit softer and squishier sometimes I take it sometimes I don't it can make a difference to how comfortable you are and it's not that much more weight so up to you but it can add an extra level of comfort and a good night's sleep makes a big difference to how much you can trek the next day so my customer service experience as I was saying at the beginning um, my first Trekology U080 map great from the start and then one camp I woke up in the morning and it was it has uh, deflated quite a lot I thought maybe I hadn't put the uh, the stuff in the nozzle properly in the hole maybe it was leaking a bit of air so I gave it another chance on another camp same thing happened again to give it the benefit of the doubt I used it a third time and um, the same thing happened again and it was all different kind of weather conditions I made sure I really closed the hole properly I tried putting it in water in a bath and squeezing it see if there's any air bubbles I tried feeling forever I tried everything to try and find if there was like a pinhole in it somewhere I think actually the hole must have been in the nozzle somewhere and the because it has a valve so once that valve is broken it's not going to work anymore um, I don't know if anyone else has had this problem so I spoke to Trekology sent them an email um, and it went through a long process of kind of a bit of backwards and forwards giving them information about my purchase which I still had all details because I bought it from Amazon and then they went silent they did say they would uh, replace it as under warranty and then they just went quiet so I messaged them again saying hi do you know what's happening um, sent them my address everything they needed to know nothing this went on for quite a while uh, a few weeks a month something like that so I ended up messaging them on Facebook and eventually they replied to that and they said they haven't got any of my emails so is it that they just ignored me I have to give them the benefit of the doubt because you know it's a bit unfair not to so maybe they just didn't receive the emails for whatever reason but credit where credit's due they did send me out a brand new one and they did not ask for the old one back so I got a brand new U080 and since then it's been fine so I don't know if it's going to happen again maybe it was a, hopefully it was a one off um, looking at the reviews on Amazon I think it has happened but you know with anything especially um, made on a budget in China everything made, everything is made in China from the highest quality to the lowest quality so you know even your high quality top brands a lot of that's made in China so there's nothing wrong with something made in China but at the end of the day if you're making it at a price, at a budget, they've got to cut corners somewhere. It might not be in the quality, but a lot of the time it's in the quality control. So they don't check and test things. Everything else apart from that has been fine. So fair play to Trekology in the end, you know, with a bit of hassling, they did exchange it. Um, and it was less than two years down the line. So in conclusion, that's the Trekology U080 sleeping pad. Like I say, I think it's your best bang for buck at the moment, and um, that's my experience. Got one, had a leak, sent it back, got sent a new one for free. So far, it's all been good. The pump sack, worth getting if you do have trouble blowing it up using your breath. If you don't, you might not care, you might not want it. And the pillow, I definitely recommend, you know, if you are starting out, this and the pillow will get you started. Boom, done. If it's cold, the only thing is it's not insulated, like I mentioned before. 
so you will want to put maybe a foam mat or even a reflective foil mat underneath if you're doing it in sort of autumn winter colder temperatures but apart from that this is a really good mat something you might want to bear in mind if you've got a smaller tent is just make sure this fits because it is quite long let's hope that pump sack comes back on the market again because i think it is actually really useful thanks for watching i uh, hope this was useful and a bit different to the other videos and uh, gives you a different side to it if you do uh, enjoy our videos or find any of these reviews helpful please do like and subscribe um, we're really trying to build the channel we did have a bit of a hiatus because of all the things that have been going on but um, if you look back to our adventure videos in summer we did a lot of really cool stuff and um, the channel's growing very slowly so we want to kind of try and keep it, give it a boost. And if you like and subscribe and put your comments below, it really helps to build the channel so we can do more stuff in the future.